there's just something about hitting the range, planking a little bit with your 22. It just doesn't go wrong. It feels right, especially if you're teaching somebody else. But there's so many different options out there. What are my top five 22 long rifle pistols? Let's find out. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms, here to bring you another one of my top fives because you guys seem to like them, you might disagree, you might agree with me, and you let me know down in the comments every single time and I love to read them, most of the time. Anyway, we recently did a video about the top five 22 long rifle calibered or chambered rifles and you guys seem to love that quite a bit. I had quite a few sentimental guns in there, uh, ones that I absolutely adore and love. And then today we're gonna go ahead and do the same, but with handguns. So today's top five is the top five 22 long rifle chambered pistols and revolvers because number five is just a simple 22 revolver. I grew up with like a um, like a like a 1873 little single action uh, that was a lot of fun and as I got into the industry and started playing more and more with these heritage rough riders I fell even more in love. These things are so much fun. If you haven't had the opportunity, just to, especially with like uh, Aguila's old school, like powderless 22s, they're absolutely quiet, probably good for about 20 yards. Uh, these things are so much fun to shoot, plinking all day in the backyard as I often did. I fancied myself quite the cowboy when I was growing up with my Henry 22 lever action and my little revolver. A lot of fun and you just can't go wrong with them. And then Heritage, the Rough Rider series, they make a lot. They make this gun with a 16 inch barrel, looks ridiculous, is freaking cool. They make them shorter, they make them with all sorts of different grips and everything. Pretty much whatever your cup of tea is, they got it. So check them out. Uh, I think you'll be happy with them. And number five, just because of how freaking fun they are. And if you just want to learn the basics, and I mean, just that sound. I mean, just every time, like, you know. I can't help but to think though, anytime somebody pulls out like a Glock or something like that, you might hear that in Hollywood. It's very wrong. Anyway, number five, Heritage Rough Rider 22 Revolver. My number four is way different than my number five. It's pretty much your MP7 at home. The kel CP33. This thing, coming from kel you know it's gonna be weird, right? They're just a company that makes weird guns, but a lot of fun guns as well. And the CP33 is pretty much right on par with that. Now what's really cool about this right off the bat is 33 rounds of 22. 33 rounds of 22 in this odd, not exactly most attractive looking gun is a lot of fun. Notice, however, there's just features all around on this gun, which is really cool. First of all, you're pretty much ambidextrous everywhere you look, except for um, your your you know, your bolt release, I guess you can call it, right back here. So you'll notice on the left-hand side, you have your actual bolt release, which on an empty mag is, uh, or even just a empty, it's a little stiff. Let me just say that. Of course, with you know some shooting and I don't know, maybe some oil, it actually like feel a little bit better. But anyway, or a round in the you know magazine. So anyway, other than that, ambi safety and the mag release, it's a hill release that you'll notice right back here on the back of the grip. Push that in, and then that allows you to pull the magazine right on out. Super easy. The Picatinny rail runs the entire length of the top of the gun, which is pretty cool. Fiber optic rear sight being that orange, fiber optic front with the green, and it already comes suppressor ready. Yes, with a threaded barrel. Now, to quell the overwhelming recoil that this gun has, you could put a brake on there if you wanted to, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Insert sarcasm here. Uh, this actually suppressed is a lot of fun. And yeah, you do for whatever reason have a little M-lock slot right here at the bottom. I don't know, I could honestly see this thing like SBR, little vertical grip or something, suppressor would be pretty freaking fun, right? Again, the MP7 at home. Darn you, HK. Anyway, whole lot of fun, 33 rounds, can't go wrong with that. Let me know what you think so far down in the comment section below, and let's roll on to my number three. My number three pick, I feel like on a 22 long rifle pistol list, if I don't have this gun on there, you guys are gonna eat me alive because the Browning Buckmark, when you think 22 pistols, a lot of people go straight to that pistol there. 
And uh, I can tell you right now, I actually don't have a lot of experience with the Browning Buckmark, but I can tell you right now that there's so many different variations of this gun and its popularity since the mid 1980s when it came out, just make it a awesome shooter. And one thing about the 22 long rifle cartridge that I love is the fact that it is just an accurate little round. It's not gonna recoil hardly at all. And you'll find that the Browning Buckmark is a very popular gun among competitive shooters. And you can find all sorts of different variations of this pistol for just your regular outdoor plinking. You can find ones that are pretty much designed for like educational purposes, for competition, for whatever you could ever think of. And again, being around for as long as it has, it's just one that is iconic, it's classic. The old school blued, all the blued metal parts like the blued barrel and the receiver or the frame, and then all of a sudden you've got that wood handle and everything, it's just classic. Kind of like our name. So anyway, number three, the Browning Buckmark, 10 rounds of 22. can't go wrong there. It's pretty much standard, I guess you could say. And it's one that I think a lot of you are gonna agree with because of its iconic reputation that it has. Let's move on to my number two. This one was hard because there's two guns that I really couldn't decide on. And uh, the one that I decided to go with is for one obvious reason, capacity. The SIG 322. We got to actually shoot one of these suppressed at SHOT Show earlier this year at the, ex at the exclusive uh, SIG premiere event and it was a lot of fun. This gun suppressed ran so freaking well and the SIG 322 TAC pack comes with three 20 round magazines, fiber optic sights, complete ambidextrous controls. You can't go wrong with that. So I'm really happy about that gun. I, fell in love with it, um, and I guess I can just go and let you guys know that the gun I couldn't really side with, even though it has some great features as well, is FN's 502. That one is like, mm, man. There's a couple of features on this FN 502 that I do like over the SIG, like for instance, it comes factory with a threaded barrel and a complete and absolute ambidextrous uh, magazine release. The magazine release on the SIG, as far as I know, you can actually switch it out, so it can be a left or right hand side release, except on FNs, you don't have to switch anything. You just push either way and it's gonna release the magazine. And it comes with a threaded barrel already. Both of them come with fiber optic sights, but the FN only has a 15 round magazine. So when it came to it, the SIG went out in its place. Now, with that being said, would you like to see a video comparing these two 22 legends? Uh, if you would, let us know down in the comment section. But in this case, sorry FN, you didn't make the cut. It's definitely going to go to the SIG P22, 322, especially shooting it suppressed, 20 round mags. What more can I say? But it didn't make my number one spot. Guys, we just got done filming the B-roll. You just watched it and I'm sure you loved it. And now my favorite, definitely SIG. Wow, it felt like a any other full-size SIG to me. Normally 22 calibers feel different, but this one felt phenomenal. So I don't know what Clint is telling you or told you, but this is what you're gonna go with. Trust me. For my number one pick, I do believe this is actually the oldest gun on the list, or at least the Ruger Standard is the oldest one on this list. And the Ruger Standard model is the basis for my number one pick. The Ruger Mark IV 2245 Tactical because you guys know me wanting to put silencers on everything and there's so many silencer companies out there that make silencers, a 22 caliber silencer dedicated for this platform because I guess you could say dedicated, but it's just the same radius as the barrel. So it just fits up perfectly. It looks like just a long barrel, but it is suppressed and shooting that is a lot of fun. And like I mentioned before, it's based off of Ruger's standard model, which I believe is the first pistol that Ruger made uh, in the late 1940s. This is also the same gun, the 2245 Tactical, when you throw a red dot on it and everything else. It's very similar to like the uh, Browning Buckmark that I talked about before, especially with all of its different variations out there. But this is the same pistol that I used to have and have the most experience with. Sad I actually sold it. I kind of grew out of 22 and I was like, I want something bigger. It's you know, early 20s, you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, really missed that gun. However, that is the same pistol that I actually learned how to shoot a pistol red dot on. And I think that's actually a great starter pistol for that because what happens is whenever you start shooting pistol red dots, what's one of the hardest things to do? Simply acquire the sight. A lot of people kind of hunting down for the red dot, like where the heck is it? Well, a 22, which again, barely recoils, 
makes it very, very easy to pick up that red dot and then it's not moving as much. Then you start upping your game to different calibers. That is a great starter gun for that and also a great competitive option as well for your for you competition shooters out there. Also, again, like I said before, a lot of different variations and stuff. We shot with uh, our buddy Dave, 22 Plankster, a while ago, and I can't remember if we actually recorded it or not, but we did actually run uh, his Volkortsen built uh, Ruger. I think it was built off the Ruger 2245 or the Mark IV frame, but had the Volkortsen barrel in it, and that was awesome. Let me just say, one smooth shooter, super accurate. He's over there playing songs and tunes and whatnot on his little target setup and everything, and I'm over there just trying to keep up. That man can shoot. I don't know if you guys know who 22 Plinkster is. You should because you've been watching this channel, but also you just should. I think he's definitely bigger than us, but he's a great shot. So anyway, that's my list. However, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Is there a gun that I absolutely left off that I should have had on here? I know you guys are probably a few are going to say, well, what about like a 22 model 1911 or something like that? Those are cool. Those are fun and all, but you know, trying to get some iconic stuff here, right? And guns that are a little bit more practical that, you know, hold like 20, at least 20 rounds or 33 or whatever it might be. So anyway, number one, the Ruger Mark IV 2245 Tactical Awesomeness. Let me know down in the comment section, agree, disagree, and while you're at that too, make sure you head on over to cfcontest.com to check out a little bit of what we have going on over there. For everything else, stay tuned. I'm sure we'll have another video coming out probably tomorrow or at least the next day. Or perhaps the next day. There's, there's always a video coming. Don't worry. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time right here on the channel at Classic Firearms.